imagine your dream trip. For me, that's Italy's Amalfi Coast, looking out at the Azure Ocean, eating freshly made pasta, drinking fine red wine with the very fine Idris Elba. <laughs> For you, it might be scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef, or going to Fashion Week in Paris, or a cozy ski vacation with your family. Whatever it is, take a moment to think about it. Who are you with? What are you eating, seeing, doing? Now imagine I'm in a betting mood, and I'm going to offer you the chance to win that dream trip. All you have to do is choose between two bets where the prize is your dream trip. One has a 50% chance of winning, and the other has unknown odds. Take a moment to decide which one you prefer. The 50% odds or the unknown odds? The overwhelming majority of people will choose the bet with the 50% odds. And at first glance, this may seem to make sense, but take a moment to think about it. That bet with the unknown odds could have a 99% chance of winning. So why not choose that one? What makes people so sure that the bet with the unknown odds has less than a 50% chance of a win? Economists have taken this extremely interesting observation about human behavior and have given it the mind-numbing title of ambiguity aversion. There's a reason that they call it the dismal science. But why do people exhibit this so-called ambiguity aversion? It's likely because if you were to choose the bet with the unknown odds, you'd actually have to make some beliefs about what you thought the true odds were. So you'd have to decide if I look like the type of person who might offer you a 99% chance of winning that dream trip. I'm not that generous. Or if I'm the type of person who would offer you a paltry 1% chance of winning the trip. I'm not that stingy. You'd have to decide what you thought the true odds were in the unknown odds bet, and that might just be too much work for you. I know it's a lot of effort for me to even talk about all the ways you can think about it. Most people prefer certainty to uncertainty. And although the distinction between a 50% chance of winning and unknown odds makes this really clear, most decisions we make are decisions with unknown odds, decisions with some uncertainty. Like when you decided how to get here tonight, you may have been deciding between taking public transit or driving. You likely didn't know the exact probability that the bus might be running late or that you'd have trouble finding parking. It's a decision with unknown odds. Or when you're deciding whether or not to go on a first date with somebody, you likely don't know the exact probability that they won't stand you up or that if they decide to show up, you'll actually enjoy their company, or that they won't have some sort of creepy doll collection. <laughs> it's a decision with unknown odds. And when you're deciding whether or not to apply to a job, you likely don't know the exact probability that you'd get an offer from the company or that you'd like their corporate culture. It's another decision with unknown odds. Most decisions are decisions with a lot of uncertainty. And like I said, it's pretty well established people prefer certainty to uncertainty, but some people prefer certainty more than others. In particular, women do. In academic studies, where they ask people to value a bunch of different bets, women put a higher value on the bets with more certainty. Women even invest their money in lower-risk investments than men, and women self-report a greater love of certainty about sports, health, finance, career. In my own life, I find that I have a greater love of certainty than my husband. When I plan date night, 
the babysitter, movie, and restaurant are all planned at least a week in advance. When he plans date night, we wing it. Both are enjoyable in their own way, but I am clearly the one with the greater love of certainty. And I don't think I'm alone in that experience. So, knowing this strong preference for certainty among women, if we want to encourage their, our, each other's participation, something we can do is enhance certainty. And somewhere we've been wanting to see more women participate is, we've been wanting to see more women in leadership and tech roles. So, one necessary step to that is getting more women to apply. Now, you might think there's just not enough women with the right qualifications, but I don't think that's actually the case, because more than half of the women who graduate with a STEM degree don't end up in a job that requires that training. In other words, there's lots of women out there with the right qualifications, but somehow they aren't ending up in those more male-dominated science and tech jobs. And part of the reason could be because they're not applying to those jobs. But maybe, just maybe, if we could get more women to apply to those jobs, if we just enhanced the certainty in the process. So what I'm suggesting is we'll get more women to apply if we just increase certainty. LinkedIn, with many job postings in finance and tech, sectors that actively want more women, was perfectly positioned to run a fascinating experiment about this. So they did. And then I came and I helped them analyze the results. What LinkedIn did was simple. They randomly assigned some job seekers to see the current number of applicants, while others could not. That's the whole experiment. To be clear, that means two people looking at the same posting for, let's say, a consulting position. One would see that 162 people had applied, and the other would not get that information. That's it. Now, think back to those two bets I offered you for your dream trip. For me, that's the chance to be with Idris in Amalfi. For you, it's something else, but the point is, that's really similar to the two versions of the job posting. That bet, one was with known odds and one with unknown odds, and these job postings, one has more certainty and one has less certainty. One is closer to the known odds and one is closer to the unknown odds. And indeed, what we found was that people who saw the current number of applicants were made more likely to apply. And in particular, women were made more likely to apply. Showing the current number of applicants increased the likelihood that a woman would finish an application by 10%. Now, it may not be that surprising that showing a woman that 10 or maybe 20 people had already applied, that that increased certainty might push her to apply. But it is pretty surprising that when a woman saw that a lot of people had applied before her, that that still made her more likely to apply than seeing no information at all. But that's what happened. A woman was made more likely to apply by seeing more information, whether that was 10 applicants or over 150 applicants. This worked for over 100,000 job postings from over 23,000 firms. So if your firm puts job postings up on LinkedIn, this is probably going to work for you. It may already have. You might be in the data set. So great, we've got more women applying to jobs, but we need those women to go to the right places. Nursing is almost all women. So if we get more women to apply to nursing, we've done virtually nothing to increase workforce diversity. Luckily, we found that women looking at more male-dominated jobs were still made more likely to apply. Increasing certainty can be easy. What LinkedIn did was simple. And last I checked, you can just ask them to turn this function on for you. And this small intervention can have a big impact because there's other research that finds having just one extra woman at your company early on can increase the proportion of women one year later by 20 percentage points. And if you believe that this is working through increased certainty, 
then what you can do is you can likely have a bigger impact by increasing certainty more, by maybe adding more details to your job posting about where you can expect to be in a year if you take this job, or the usual time till first evaluation. And if you and other companies do that, that could lead to more women applying, and that could lead to more women actually working in your and other people's companies, and that might lead to an overall more diverse workforce. That would be great for you and for the place of women in society, but it would also probably be good for your bottom line because there's research that shows that having more women at your company makes your company less likely to fail and has higher profits. And women at the very highest levels matter a lot because the loss of a female board member is associated with a 2% drop in firm value. Another place we could use more women is in politics. And I think that there's reason to believe we could use enhanced certainty to get that to happen. There's research out there that says that if you send a woman a message telling her that she's one of the most politically active people in her party, that message doubles the chances she'll take the next step towards becoming more politically active. Currently, only one in five members of Congress is a woman. Yet women politicians in the U.S. spend more money on family-friendly policies, like enforcement of child support. So having more women in politics could lead to better resources for children. Another place we could use more women is at the global negotiations table. Because there's research that shows that having at least one woman at the table when they are negotiating a wartime peace accord is correlated with a 20% rise in the likelihood that accord will still be in place two years later. Most people like certainty. It's not just women. So you can use this tool in your everyday life. It doesn't just have to be about getting more women into politics or negotiations. So if you're trying to convince Idris to go on that trip with you, you could provide him more certainty by telling him about the amazing food you'll be eating or the breathtaking views you're going to be taking in. You want your kid to go to sleep without protesting. Well, one thing you can do is provide more certainty by doing the same thing before bedtime every night. I found this has helped a lot with my three-year-old, although, as with all things with a three-year-old, my hit rate is well below 100%. Nothing like a toddler to remind you, some people, no matter how much certainty you provide them, will never be persuaded. If you don't embrace the idea that certainty inspires action, you're ignoring something to change the status quo. You're leaving something on the table. But if you do embrace this idea and leverage it in your company or other environments, your small interventions could have a big impact. Because even if you only get one additional female employee, politician, or negotiator, that presence, that action, that change in your company, in our shared government, or at the global negotiations table, won't just have a payoff in profits and in peace. That increased certainty might just change the world. Thank you.